Looking for magic cards or magic carps? TCG Player has all the singles you need to upgrade your decks. Import a list with mass entry and let the card optimizer do the rest. Use my affiliate link down below when shopping and you'll be supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to another standard gameplay video. The footage you're about to see was recorded during the early access event for March of the Machine, so thanks to Wizards for giving me access to this fully unlocked account to preview the new expansion. And today we're taking a look at a Naya, Jeru and Hazoret creature combo deck. The 5 mana 5 4 legendary human god says as long as we have one or fewer cards in hand, Jeru and Hazoret have vigilance and haste, and whenever they attack, we get to look at the top 6 cards of our library, and we may exile a legendary creature card from among them, put the rest on the bottom, and then until end of turn, we may cast the exiled card for free. So we've got some expensive legends that we can try to hit with the Jiro and Hazoret, and those include three copies of Kogla and Yudaro, six mana, seven, seven. When it enters, it either fights an opposing creature, or we can give it Trample and Haste until end of turn. Of course, if we're casting it for free, it's going to be in our second main phase, so we're most likely fighting something. can also discard Kogla and Yudaro from our hand to blow up an artifact or enchantment and draw a card in the process, and then we also get to shuffle them back into our library to maybe draw in the future. Then we have two copies of Itali, Primal Conqueror, the 7 mana 7-7 seven, seven legendary Elder Dino has Trample, and when Itali enters a battlefield, each player exiles cards from the top of their library until they exile a non-land card, and we may cast any number of those cards until end of turn for free. And then we can also potentially transform Itali for 9 and a green Phyrexian mana, so that's 9 mana to life or 10 mana total, into Itali Primal Sickness, 11-11, Trample, Indestructible, and when it deals common damage to a player, they get that many poison counters, so it can be a fun alternate win condition. And then last but not least, we've got Galta and Mavron. The 7 mana 12 12 legendary Dino Vampire has Trample, and whenever we attack, doesn't have to be with Galta, we get to either create a tapped and attacking XX green Dino creature token with Trample, where X is the greatest power among author attacking creatures, or we can make an army of 1 1 life linking vampires, where X is the number of author attacking creatures. So a nice bit of flexibility there, but for the most part, we're just hoping to smash face with it. And then we, of course, need a bit of ramp to get to 5 mana for Jaren Hazoret, and hopefully be mostly empty-handed. And that's where both Catilda as well as our Relic of Legends will come in handy. Of course, our deck is filled with legendary creatures, so Relic can give us a huge mana boost by tapping all those legendary creatures. And we also have three copies of Gwena, Eyes of Gaia, which can tap for two mana of any color to cast creature spells or activate abilities of creatures. So that's another way of potentially ramping into our expensive creatures if we don't manage to hit them with Jiro and Hazoret. And then even if we're not empty-handed, we can also potentially give them haste using Halana and Elena, the partners, giving a bunch of plus one plus one counters and haste until end of turn to one of our other creatures. And then for added redundancy, I'm also playing two copies of Fauna Shaman, the only non-legendary creature in the deck. Two mana, two two, can pay green, tap, and discard a creature card, which is also a useful way of getting rid of excess legendaries that we already have in play. And then search our library for any creature card and put it into our hand. So that can also help find Jero and Hazret if we don't have one already. And then other two drops include Thalia, great at disrupting the opponent, will only tax her own Relic of Legends, so mostly affects the opponent. Got the Loyal Bodyguard, great at protecting our team from sweeper effects. And then a Melira can also save a creature from removal. And then we also have three copies of Skrelv, which is another way of protecting a key creature. So between Skrelv, Bodyguard, and Melira, we have a lot of ways to protect Jiru and Hazret once we get them down. And then a mana base also has a few goodies. Of course, Plaza of Heroes is excellent in any legendary deck. Also gives us extra protection as a mana sink. Then we've got uh, fast lands, which are great in any aggressive strategy. And the channel lands also get a big discount from controlling legendaries, so we can often channel them for just a single mana between Buseju, Crucible to make 1-1s, one and Iganjo as removal. Could potentially consider playing more of these as just basically a removal spell that we're playing as a land, but I don't want to get into situations where we draw multiples, which can get pretty awkward. So yeah, that's our deck. Now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Alright, we're on the draw, and uh, yeah, our hand's a little bit on the clunky side. Too many expensive creatures. This seems better. Turn on adaptive, so put maybe a mono green aggro. So 
So let's start with Athalia. And then we'll keep Skrelv back for protection. Polychronos is going to be a problem. So we got to find our partners maybe to build up our own creatures or just find some ramp to get Kogla in play. Relic of Legends or Katilda could help. Could of course use Skralf to attack past the Polychronos. I think I'm better off uh, staying back for now. All right, trigger greeters. Could double block Polychronos, but then we would lose both creatures. So let's just trade for the adaptive. Back of Thalia's not great. I guess I can uh, cycle one Cogline Idaro while the treasure is tapped and they cannot sacrifice it in response. Alright, Jiren has red, could be nice. Still need double red to cast it. play Jero but won't be able to attack with it since it doesn't have haste. Just Belucranos attacking. Could jump with Thalia. And then we get a shot at finding something exciting of Jeru. And drawing an untapped land can also cast Kogla. Katilda doesn't quite do it. So yeah, let's attack and hope for the best. Found Bodyguard. Which we can cast for free. And then with Katilda we can play Kogla next turn. Okay. Ooh, Defiler Vigor is bad news. Especially if they have some one drops left in hand to put counters everywhere. Get to untap, and then it's time for Kogla. Probably tapping Katilda here in the process. Take out the Defiler. And then can just attack with Jiren Hazret, and that's it. Getting a free Galta. We hit the jackpot. Can still channel Iganjo by tapping Thalia. Opponent's jumping. Alright. Next turn we can activate Skrelv on Galta, so it goes unopposed. Or on Kogla, since Galta already tramples. Opponent is capable of transforming Polychronos into a 6-6 reach and lifelink, and that's what he'll do. But yeah, opponent seems dead on board. I can activate Skrelv on Galta. And then by sacking Bodyguard, we increase its power by one. And 
And then our opponent doesn't even get to block with her lifelinker. Although I'm sure an all-out attack would have been fine too. Sweet, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw. Our hand's got everything it needs except for Jero and Hazorat. So I'm hoping we can top deck it. Even if we don't, and maybe find some of our other expensive creatures between Catilda and Gwena, we might be able to cast them. Turn two, could go for Bodyguard. Alright, now kind of liking Catilda for the extra mana. And Skralf can stay on defense to protect our team. Stormseeker is going to hit pretty hard. I finally remembered to block the werewolf here with Catilda. Play Gwena. Should have gone for Thicket. My bad. And then pass it back. And next turn we could already play a Tally. Another Beast Caller. We'll probably get haste. Alright, hopefully we take one final beating. No interest in trading. And then we'll be able to play a Tally and still play Bodyguard by untapping Gwena. There's Kumano. So far, so good. What do we get? Malira and Bodyguard. Okay, I guess it works. And then... Could even attack with Gwen at this point. Might be a bit aggressive, but we've got an Atali on defense. And we're not too far from transforming Atali into the Primal Sickness. It's going to take 10 mana. And with all the humans and Catilda, we could get there next turn. Could still be in trouble if a large flyer shows up that they can give haste. So we're not out of the woods yet. All right, let's see what happens. Another Stormseeker. Got the last tapped now. Do we see an all-out attack, perhaps? Don't mind sacking the Bodyguard if necessary, since we have another one. All right, so let's line up some blocks. Three goes through, sack bodyguard. That looks good. Okay, so let's count our mana. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So yeah, if I play this untapped, we should be able to transform Itali. And that should be 11 poison damage coming across. Sweet, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw, and we're missing Jira and Hazaret, but don't think I can turn down an early Catilda with a bit of ramp into partners and eventually Kogla. Thalia will also come in handy. Start with Catilda, and then we can maybe play Relic into Thalia so we don't get taxed. Go to backup Catilda if they take it out. Invasion will do exactly that. Alright, so we can play Relic, and then next turn try and double spell, or I can play Thalia to maybe slow down the opponents. I'll just play Relic. A 
Raptor. Yeah, that can uh, deal four to the invasion. Could even play partners and then tempt them to play Thalia to put counters on it so it can block the Raptor profitably. That might be okay. So we'll hang back. And then next turn we're looking at maybe a Kogla and Yidaro. If they can kill Thalia, we might be in trouble. It's gonna be a Fable for 4 mana, that's fine. Alright, a Galta. I could even cast here. Although, probably want to do some damage control first. 4, 5, 6, 7 mana. So if I play Melira, I can still play Kogla afterwards. If I'm not mistaken. And then Melira can protect our key legendaries. Could of course also just pump Kogla and smash. Which is not a terrible idea, since we're just putting the opponent under a ton of pressure. Especially with Galta next turn. Could just end the game. Opponent falls to 11. So it might be fine if they get their Thunder Maw. Glissa. Okay. That one's pretty good against our large Kogla. Although with Galta we might still be fine. Yeah, let's say I play Galta and attack with the whole team. I think we'll be fine since we can make a huge trampling dino. And our opponent has seen enough. Awesome. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play with a uh, keepable, if unexciting, hand. With Gwenna hoping to pick up Jero and Hazred, of course. But any of our more expensive creatures could be nice. And then we can lead with Bodyguard in case they take it out. We've got a backup. Thalia could be nice too. Might be more relevant disruption early. Even though we could try and protect it with a bodyguard first. Triple bodyguard. Although I think I want to just curve out. And then next turn we could double spell. Ooh, Mentor is a problem since we don't have any removal. Although Kogla is pretty close to being cast, just need one more land. So for now, play Bodyguard and Melira. And hit for two. Thalia should be pretty effective in the matchup if her opponent's casting lots of non-creature spells for Mentor. Wedding announcement for 4 mana makes 2 tokens total. Alright, come on, untapped land. There we go. Take out Mentor. And smash. Bone falls to five. So it doesn't take much to cross the finish line. 
An Exile effect could still get us, but with Thalia they cannot cast a 5 mana sweeper, and our opponent explodes onto the next one. Alright, we're on the draw. Don't love the look of this. If I could actually play Skrelv on 1, we could protect Shaman as it gets our Jiren Hazoret, but as is, it feels a bit slow if they kill Shaman, my plan falls apart. Alright, this has a bit more potential. And then could just ditch Kogla, even though Relic is a way of ramping into it. So maybe get rid of Melira. And then hope for a third land. Second Thalia is a little awkward. So now I'm potentially in favor of just playing Thalia. Stomper for ramp, alright. Opponent's going big. We can try and go big ourselves. Our land helps. So I won't quite be able to double spell here since Thalia doesn't make red or green. But uh, play Catilda and attack for two. And then with a the land I could already cast Kogla next turn. Herd Migration gets a land. And Ossification gets rid of Thalia. That's doing us a favor almost. Wouldn't be able to play Kogla now, but we can play Relic into Bodyguard and Thalia. So yeah, let's jam Kogla. And then could go for haste, could go for the fight on the Stomper. Kind of like the haste mode, even though maybe a Wandering Emperor could be a concern there. So yeah, let's just fight. Get our immediate value. And attack. Opponent falls to 16. And we're good against a potential sweeper, as long as it doesn't exile. Ooh, Storm the Festival. Could be scary. Alright, just a Prowler. Could have been worse. Get to look at their graveyard here. And a Skrelv. Okay, play Skrelv. And smash. Could also think about activating Catilda here. One, two, three, four, five, six. That would do it. Probably gets us more damage over time. And then probably no need to keep a plaza here since we have bodyguard. Points a 12. Alright, so we are presenting lethal potentially. Depopulate Sag Bodyguard. Even draw a card in the process. If we could actively choose for the opponent to cast a depopulate there, we would have gone for it. And our opponent explodes. Awesome. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play, and our hand seems decent. Fauna Shaman can potentially get our Jiren Hazret. Catilda to make more mana. Not sure how we're gonna sequence our two drops yet. Gwena's nice too. Could go Bodyguard to protect Gwena. That might be the sequence. And then Gwena unlocks the rest of our hand. Could also double spell Catilda and Shaman in case there's a counter spell, although then they would just counter Catilda to begin with. So let's play Gwena. Can attack first, I suppose. Alright, opponent had the removal spell. Let's hope they don't have a second. 
the rest is gonna miss. Only creatures here. And Edict sadly takes care of Gwenna. Alright, so can we double spell here? Should be able to. And then we're not too far from Shaman, get Jerun Hazaret and cast him. If we draw a land, we can attack with a hasty Jerun Hazaret. Discard a Shaman. One card left in hand, so we'll have Vigilance and Haste. And Smash. And a free Galta, sounds good. Get to live the dream. Through double removal spell, no less. Let's see if they have another answer for Galta. The next turn we can cast Kogla as well. Opponent goes digging. And our opponent explodes. Awesome. So yeah, good to see our Naya Legends in action. Jiren Hazaret definitely have some very exciting moments. Not sure if this is the perfect build, since there are certainly awkward draws where you either have too many expensive cards in hand without any ramp to cast them, or you end up uh, just drawing a bunch of ramp with no real payoffs. So it's definitely a bit of a balancing act, and the perfect build has yet to be found, but definitely a step in the right direction, I feel, with the uh, Fauna Shaman giving you a bit of extra redundancy to find those key cards, and uh, having partners as another way of giving haste in case you're not empty-handed can also come in handy. So yeah, that's going to do it for today's gameplay. want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.